I caught up with Ricky Ponty at a members function on Friday night. Let's see how it unfolds. <laughs> uh, well done today. You and Ed really turned the game and it was a world class display, mate. Uh, you enjoying being back in the Tassie Colours? Thanks, Sandy, yeah, and thanks for the kind words. Uh, look, it's been great to be back. It's, um, I came back at the right time, did play in a Rehoboth Cup final last week, and then the last two Shield games that uh, are pretty, pretty important ones as far as the season's concerned, Tasmanian cricket. So I've come back at the right time. Um, look, really enjoyed the, the couple of weeks that I've had so far. Today was you know, a big day for the team, and, and Ed and I um, uh, you know, played reasonably well, I guess, to get ourselves into a a pretty strong position in the game and um, yeah tomorrow morning's obviously a, a big session in the whole season for Tasmania cricket and I'm, one I'm sure the boys are all up for. Someone's loss is always someone's gain and cricket had a gain from your loss with the being falling out of the one day team. Talk us a bit about that process, I mean you're the kind of player that's bounced back for so long. What was happening in your mind during that period where you weren't doing well before you were yeah. Well, I was actually wondering where I was going to score my next run, to tell the truth, because I played five <laughs> games and didn't score, or well, I didn't make double figures once, but um, look, that's the game. It, especially international level, there's nowhere to hide when you're not when you're not playing well and you're a little bit out of touch. Um, you know, it can, your top opposition teams expose those weaknesses that you have. And, um, you know, probably the most disappointing thing for me was, um, you know, the fact that I'd sort of put my neck on the line to come back and captain the side for those couple of games and then captain the team and was left out of the next one, which would have been the game down here in Hobart and if they had let me know that I was a chance of getting dropped then it would have been nice to play one more game down here yes, and yeah, make yeah, the yeah. Yeah. And, uh, As was made pretty clear to me, there's no such thing as fairy tales in international sports. So <laughs> we'll see about that because if we win, win down here yes. then there might just be a fairy tale in a couple of weeks time. Bear with me a bit here. Ricky, you're the reason I bought my first cricket bat. It was a Cabrera <laughs> Ridge bat, so I'm still pitching myself here. Um, you've been involved with cricket tennis for 20 years, or probably longer. Yeah, I'm not sure I made you feel old, but what's the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cricket tennis obviously it feels like it's a hub of Australian cricket at the moment. Uh, what's changed in the period? Oh, look, it is. There's no doubt about that. It's um, it's really uh, when you're in the Australian team and you're around those sort of players, it's really uh, it's really great now to hear what they've got to say about Tasmanian cricket. Um, <laughs> you know, every opposition player from other states is talking about what we're doing with our cricket down here, and there's no bigger accolade, I don't think, than having you know the bigger um, cricket states, if you like, talking about what we're doing in our program. Um, it was interesting to listen to. Um, Clinger after the Ryobi Cup talking about the dynasty that we created around the Ryobi Cup over the last five, six, seven, ten years. And it's um, testament to uh, to our coaching staff, Tasmania Cricket, for the investment that they've made in a lot of the players and the coaches and, and the way that we just go about our cricket these days. I mean, it's, um, that's why it's always nice for me to come back and, and play a few games because, you know, when you're coming back, it's it's proper cricket, they're playing the right way, we're, we're doing everything we can to, to win every hour, every day's play that we play and uh, when you have that sort of attitude and a bit of belief around the group that you can win from any situation and it's, um, you know, that's where Tasmania cricket is right now. You look at the players that we've produced and, and will keep producing over the next period of time and the coaches and the people that are, the Tasmanian people that are now involved in cricket around Australia and around the world. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great reward for all the hard work that's been put in through that 20 years that you say that I've been playing. Um, <laughs> you know, when, when I first started, it is 20 years I've played, the Tassie now started when I was 17 and I'm 37 now, so it's 20 years of playing and, and the, the difference between the way that we play cricket now and when I first started is, is chalk and cheese. I mean, we we used to turn up and hope that we could compete and hope that we could win a, win a game here and there. Now we turn up and we expect to win every game that we play and that's, uh, when you have that belief around a playing group and a coaching group, it's amazing what can be achieved. Um, Ricky, your hair's looking pretty good at the moment. <laughs> 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 you are getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I only met you, I probably said two words to you before we got up here, so it's probably big of me to say this, but I noticed we went to the boxing the other night and it's looking really smick. <laughs> How have you managed that? Is all these hair programs that actually work? <laughs> <laughs> Questions you have in mind.
I have no idea which one of the boys that's come from as well, so uh, the remainder of the week, that guy will be having a pretty hard time from that. Uh, no, yeah, it is looking pretty good, thanks, Sandy. And, um, yeah, I might, wouldn't mind hanging out with you for a couple of weeks down here, though. I reckon we go, I think we're out of the seat. Ricky, obviously, West Indies is next on the cards. Yeah. You, have you given up playing one-day cricket for Australia? Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't matter what they said to me now, I wouldn't come back and play um, one-day cricket. Um, those days for me are gone. You know, 375 games, whatever it was, is something that I'm very proud of. I mean, I think that's probably the thing that I'm most proud of in my career has been my longevity in the game and, and still my love and passion for the game now. I mean, but, you know, th those days are gone. There's a World Cup coming up in a few years' time that the Australian one-day team is building towards, so um, if I'm not part of that, then that's fine. Um, you know, what that means for me is, is more games for Tasmania and more time down back in my home state. I'll, next year, leading into the, uh, the Test match summer and through the pre-season, I'll be spending a lot more time down here. I'm looking forward to that, to, to be around the group. West Indies is on the cards next, so um, in you know in a few weeks' time. But uh, yeah, we've got some other stuff to worry about before that. I don't think we don't leave until about the 27th or 28th of the month. So we've got you know a couple of big days here. Hopefully, it'll give us a, an extra week on the end of our season. And if we get that extra week, then whoever we play, they'll be in a, a pretty good contest. I'm going to tell you that. One last question: What does Ricky Ponting do on the day off? <laughs> Uh, generally go to the golf course. Depends <laughs> <That's laughs> where I am. If I'm at home and my wife hasn't seen me for a little while, then what's a little while? For your wife, a few mate. weeks. A few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, um, unfortunately they couldn't, they couldn't come down here this week. Just the way things worked out. So, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing them and the, and the little ones. But uh, yeah, if I'm home and I've got a day off, then. Brown and the kids will see me from probably so when we wake up to just after lunch and then I get to golf from just after lunch until it gets dark. So <laughs> um, no, look, family life is is what it's all about for me now. I mean I think that's probably why I'm a little bit more relaxed around my cricket these days than I was a little while ago. You know, obviously not being captain of the Australian team anymore and you know, being captain for this week or whatever, um, look, that's great, but um, as Corley alluded to with Griff, there's more to life than, than just cricket. And when you've got some other things that you know can take up a lot of your time, it, it actually makes playing cricket a lot easier. When you can you free your mind up of other things and not be thinking about cricket 24/7, then that's you know what's been able to work for me over the years. So with two little girls now and and a wife that's pretty keen to get a bit of my time, um, you know I love that part of my life. And uh, as I've been saying to Rihanna the last uh, six or eight months now that we've got two little girls, there's a fair bit of pressure on her for a boy to come the next one. So. <laughs> She's under more pressure than me, Let, let's put it that way. <laughs> Ricky, I think I can say on behalf of everyone in this room, not only are you a great crew, you seem like a great guy, and they just give you no now. It's Friday night, we can go out for all night. It's obvious how much pride you take when you play for Tasmania, and we look forward to seeing that as much as we can, so thanks very much for coming. <laughs>